Thank you. Mr. McMullen, I want to address Kroger's workforce practices and specifically how you accommodate or how you treat requests for accommodation. Let's suppose hypothetically that Kroger had a vegan worker with strong ethical beliefs about animal welfare. Um, if she requested to work outside, say, the butcher department and instead in the produce department, would Kroger accommodate that request? Thank, thank you, Senator, for the question. And it's one of the nice things about uh, uh, one of our retail stores. There's many different areas. And we routinely have people uh, transferring between departments. Uh, some of that is just personal interest. Uh, some of that is uh, to grow in their own personal career. And if you look at our store directors, 70% of our store directors started out as an hourly associate. So it's easy to accommodate somebody. Uh, and that accommodation is really uh, based on uh, their own desires and their own interests. Would you make such accommodations based on their Christian beliefs as well? Uh, we would not get involved in terms of uh, religious uh, beliefs. Okay, the reason I ask is that you recently agreed to pay $180,000 to settle a religious discrimination case in Conway, Arkansas. In that case, two Kroger employees, Brenda Lawson, age 72, and Trudy Rickard, age 57, uh, declined the uh, directive to begin wearing a new store apron with a multicolored heart symbol on it. They, like many other of your employees, felt uncomfortable with the new aprons because they thought the heart resembled a gay pride symbol. Rather than make accommodations, Kroger fired these two employees. One employee simply asked to cover the symbol with a name tag, but Kroger refused even that reasonable accommodation. Are you aware of these terminations, Mr. McMullen? Uh, Senator, I am, I am not. This was not a private lawsuit either by two disgruntled employees, Mr. Mullen. This was brought by the EEOC. So are you not aware when your company is sued for religious discrimination by the United States government? Uh, no, sir, I am not. Not always. Well, I'm disappointed by that. Um, are you aware that Mr. M or Mr. McMullen, are you aware that Kroger has something called an allyship guide for its employees? Uh, yes, Senator. Okay. Um, in the allyship guide, you direct employees to stop using sir and ma'am because they're not inclusive. Do you expect 72-year-old employees in rural areas of Arkansas to really stop using words like sir and ma'am? If you, if you look at our allyship guide overall, it's trying to uh, support our associates in uh, uh, going forward and trying to in be inclusive for everybody with all different beliefs. And uh, when you look at our associate resource group, uh, our associate resource groups were created several years ago uh, for people with different types of interests. And uh, we think it's incredibly important to be an inclusive opening culture uh, to welcome all associates. If employees in your stores in rural Arkansas refer to other employees or customers or sir as ma'am, do they face disciplinary action? Uh, I, not that I'm aware of, sir, I would have to ask. Are, um, are, are you still requiring employees to wear the apron with the rainbow heart symbol on it? Yeah, if you, the, um, if you look at this, uh, we, we put in place an apron several years ago because our associates wanted to have a common dress code. Uh, the heart is the symbol of our, the Kroger's fundamental purpose is to feed the human spirit. And uh, part of feeding the human spirit is the heart. And that heart is our fundamental strategy to support our purpose. Uh, the colors were not tied to uh, any specific thing. Well, I'm not sure I believe that because it was introduced during Pride Month as a supposed sign of inclusivity and a federal judge didn't agree with it either. That's why he rejected your company's motion for summary judgment and you just paid $180,000 to two employees that you wrongly terminated. By the way, would you like to offer an apology here to Brenda Lawson and Trudy Rickard for the ordeal they went through? I would need to understand more of the details, Senator. Thank you. Okay. Um, so is it the case that you are still requiring all employees without accommodation to wear this apron with the rainbow heart? Uh, if you look at the, uh, our apron would be required for all associates to wear consistently across the company. Does it or does it not still include the symbol for which you just paid $180,000 to settle an EEOC lawsuit against your company? Uh, it would include a heart on it. Uh, and, Senator. And af having settled that lawsuit, are you now going to grant accommodations to employees who 
don't wish to display a symbol that they may perceive as not aligned with their moral and Christian views? Uh, Senator, I will uh, thank you for the question. I will need to f uh, follow back up with our team with more of the details. If this merger goes through, who's going to be making decisions about uniforms in the combined company and whether to grant reasonable accommodations? If you look on, in terms of our fundamental uh, uniform that was put in place, our associate resource groups uh, work together in terms of designing the uniform, and, uh, and we would use the same type of approach uh, on a combined company basis. Okay. Um, you know, this situation reminds me a little bit of the situation big tech companies have found themselves in in recent years. They've come to Washington because they fear regulation from our Democratic friends or action by the Biden administration, and they expect Republicans who are traditionally more supportive of free enterprise to come to their defense. And I've cautioned them for years that if they silence uh, conservatives and center-right uh, voters across the country, if they discriminate against them in their company, they probably shouldn't come and ask Republican senators to carry the water for them whenever our Democratic friends want to regulate them or block their mergers. So I, I've heard a lot, a lot of questioning about that today, and I've read a lot about it in the news. Um, and I'll say this. I'm sorry that's happening to you. Best of luck. Uh, I believe that I have the gavel in 